I think when people look back on me in 50 years, 100 years, they'll say, look at his first album cover. What was he telling us from Jump? Cops versus soldiers? Why? Well, if someone's going to come take your guns, I explained to my conservative friends back in the day, I said, it ain't going to be Eric Holder. It ain't going to be Obama or Hillary Clinton, you m****. It's going to be your local cops. The state of the world is in shambles. Uh, some would say, some would say we're in the state of a revolution and, and massive change. But um, one person I know a lot of people are looking to hear from uh, during this time is Immortal Technique, who's not only one of the greatest lyricists, storytellers to ever at the mic, but has a, a powerful voice, powerful message to share. And, um, you know, thank you for being here, first of all. Uh, you know, I, I want to get right into it. Atlanta is, is, you know, maybe the most recent thing that, that's on people's minds right now. Um, you tweeted, we got to stay strong, not give up, organize, strategize, and keep going. I wanted to know from your perspective, what do you think the next steps are to this revolution, um, if you can call it that? And if you had to kind of give some strategy to people who are on the front line or people who are even just at home, uh, what would you say to them? I would say that the feeling on the street is that people have gotten more. And I'm just telling you because I've been out there with everybody. People feel like they've gotten more from being in the streets for a couple of weeks than they have voting for neoliberal politicians, voting for conservatives, voting for Republicans, voting for Democrats. And I feel like a lot of people have realized that change comes outside of the system of electorates. You know, electoralism is a system which basically tells us that voting 25 times every century creates a democracy. And some people believe in that, but it's those small elections that are supposed to make a difference too. And you're also supposed to work outside an election to make sure that those communities get the resources and the resistance that they need. You know, the Black Panther Party, the original uh, OGs that were at this march that I was at yesterday, were exemplary of that. People who were young kids, my, many of them were teenagers. They weren't like commandos like some people have recreated in history. Most of them were just young black kids from Harlem um, who wanted to make a change outside a system that they felt was not in, inclusatory to them. And they said, you know what I mean? Uh, what, we're, what we have to do is just take this back ourselves, do the work ourselves. You know, if someone needs resources, we'll find them. However the fuck, we'll get starving people, starving families, what they need. I think people forget that regardless of how uh, this latest episode of police brutality is played out, there are other compiling factors that are involved here. First of all, there's no bread and circus for the mob, right? America's a mob. It, it's always been that way. It's ruled by a mob mentality. That happens when you have too many people in any room. And in order to keep that mob mentality right, the, the system of racist checks and balances had to be put into place. So working class white people never felt like they were a wage slave. You know, they felt like they were free for so long and so much so that they believed that propaganda that we need to go back to somewhere. And so much so that they've been trained that anybody, anytime somebody challenges that narrative, that they have to be like some liberal Democrat, like, okay, so if I hit on a woman and she don't want to talk to me, that makes her a lesbian. Like what's wrong with you people? Like just stupid. Like the, the amount of, of, of intellectual dishonesty that I've seen. So listen, being, being woke or being red pilled or red roofied or whatever the fuck you think you are, that shit don't feed nobody. That's not helping anybody. So we're out here in the streets, not just talking about it, but because I see that a lot of the banter that, I, that I've checked for online, whether it's fact driven or whether it's just a bunch of propaganda, all it's been doing is giving people an excuse to do nothing to not get involved. Oh man, this is led by this, so, nah, nah, nah. or they learn a few catchphrases and they throw them into the mix instead of saying, oh wait, man, there are people out there who are really hurting. Or, mm -hmm. hey, if there are, if this was a paid actor, right? And this, this is actually a person who was exposed for this. Does that mean that all this other stuff is false? Like, so you're telling me that police brutality doesn't exist? Mm -hmm. And then the disingenuousness that I've seen from people when we talk about defunding the police, um, Look, I know willful ignorance when I see it. I'm not yeah. stupid. So if you think and you're going to peddle the idea that the only thing keeping us black and brown savages from tearing each other apart are a group of right-leaning white men with guns, are you fucking stupid? 
no. Oh, we'll take the police. And you know, nah, nah, nah. there was a horrible meme I saw where women said, what are you going to do when you get raped? And they were like, and those women who have been raped cried and laughed and cried and laughed because so many people who have been victims of sexual assault know what it's like to go to a place where you don't get the help that you think you're going to get, where people have called the police because they've been robbed. And we've seen videos of them getting beat the fuck up. It's just, it got to a point where people have had enough with the, the, the sense of entitlement that people in authority have had. And if they feel that way on a macrocosm of scale to the point that they were willing to elect a game show host just because a person was outside of the field of, of politics, then that's going to be magnified now even more so than it was during the Donald Trump election. See, I think that's what people don't understand. See, this is not just about George Floyd. This encompasses so many people mm -hmm. that have been the victim of this. And even, you know, it's weird as I've talked to white people that will say, oh, this is, this is a myth, this doesn't happen. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I could show you an example of a white person. And they'll say, well, they'll show me. And then I'll, I'll, I'll hashtag a guy named Daniel Shavers. And I say, well, what did he do? He was machine gunned in a hallway. And then I'm like, do you see what they do? They train you to think that somehow he must have done something. So you're making excuses for this guy, right? But it's all justified because you've seen it done to people who don't have as much political power and therefore you've accepted it. You know, I've yeah. met people that I know are smart people and I've had to smack them upside the head verbally and say, well, wait a minute, you're saying that the kids are in cages and that's excusable because somehow Obama had a similar policy before and now it's still bullshit. So why aren't we doing anything now? Oh, well, that's just, you know, and then you got to come up with a bunch of other, like the first lie ain't good enough. So you got to come yeah, up with rationalizing a bunch of other it all. And I'm, and I'm saying that that's pathetic. They, that's how they, they, you're the cuck, right? They, they fucked you up so badly that now you're, you're thinking about dehumanizing other people like that's normal. Like you want to protect a statue of Christopher Columbus who was trafficking little girls on an island. Does that remind you of anybody else that was recently in the news? Some sicko who's trafficking eight and nine year old girls on a fucking island? That's who you're caping for? Also for the people that are gonna complain and be in the comment section, fuck you, you don't know history. This has nothing to do with Italian people, moron. This had to do with the Catholic church. In 1892, uh, uh, they, they put out a decree that there was going to be a mass for Columbus Day. They wanted to draw Italians that were moving away from the Catholic Church back to the Catholic Church. So they said, oh, you know what? Because there's always been a spiritual uh, 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 divide here in America between Catholics, Protestants. Remember, for, for years, people didn't want to, the propaganda against John F. Kennedy was that he was Catholic and that he would somehow be beholden to the Pope. Still, popery in fucking 1960s. So this is what I mean. In, in that case, you have a church who's come up and created this holiday and stood behind it. So I feel like people don't just need to direct their anger at an idiot like Cuomo who makes a tone deaf statement here in New York or the police or Italian people. You address the people who made the holiday. You gotta go to the church to say, hey, listen, you, you, know, what, you know what this person did. You who have a problem with having, having a person move from one place to another when they commit a sexual act on a child. You who are guilty of this, this is who you put on a fucking statue? Does it make sense to people now? Are you fucking stupid? Do you get it? You've been talking about Pizzagate your whole life, and here's the real Pizzagate. Yeah. It's not just a myth. You're right. People are out there doing this. They're sick cabals of people, and some of them were in religion. And therefore, you gave them a pass. Why? Because they held up your conservative narrative about how the world would be, where a man should be and a woman should be. Really? That's why they're doing this? where a child's place is next to a priest and, and, and you're gonna give them a pass because of that? And then you start to realize, oh man, this is the person, these are the same people who venerated Columbus and put him out like that to create a holiday. It has nothing to do with, 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 with just the rank and file of the people that we associated with that because that's where Joe Colombo from the Colombo family was murdered. That's because there's been, uh, during the 70s, when there was the, the Italian uh, uh, rights organization, civil rights organization, which was a lot of people said the front for the mafia, they would be down there all the time. So it was always associated with them, but it's the worst example of, of a people. You know, like if, if, if you're from any country in the world, Armenia, Nigeria, um, Romania, France, uh, 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 Colombia, Cuba, and there's a guy who was a sexual predator, right? Who was part of the country you came in. Why would you want that person held up as an example? Like, don't you, don't you have a million other Italian inventors, people who did great things, who you could easily replace the statue with. It's not saying 
that, but what people get confused with, they say, oh, this is the American Taliban. No moron, I'll correct you right now. Uh, the Taliban was destroying uh, images of God, right? Godly images because they were zealots. That's what right-wing uh, conservative freak shows have missed. And that's what neoliberal pearl clutchers, those democratic pearl clutchers, oh my God, the statue is coming down. Okay, you elitist fuck. Let me explain some to you. The people in Iraq and ISIS who destroyed statues there, those were religious statues. The Confederacy people, those are mud idols to cannibalist, racist society. These people are horrible people who did terrible things and we've been excusing them because they created the world that we live in now, the race war that we live in now. See, that's the other myth. People say, well, we're, you're, you're, you people are, are, are trying to start a race war. No, the best thing I've seen is three kids in front of the CNN offices when they burned it down, a little, little black kid, a little Mexican kid, and then there was a bunch of white kids all around and they said, man, we're not trying to start a race war, we're trying to end one because it never ended, it's still going on. And because it impacts uh, communities of color, because it impacts uh, uh, working class white people that have been pitted against working class black and Latino people, that works to people's advantages more than anything else. And, and they don't realize how much they've been divided until now. That's why you see a big part of you, the youth movement coming out, right? And now they wanna say, oh man, let's separate the angry black kids from the angry white kids. To, to whose benefit is that, right? You, you, you wanna put, talk about who burned the target. Like, do you not understand how the economy works? This government gives billions of dollars to corporations who then create a few minimum wage jobs in the hood, say yeah. they're helping us, right? You self-righteous fuck. And then what do we get out of it? Nothing, right? So what did you really create? Right? You, you create a program, a first step program, which lets people out of jail. God bless them. I'm glad that those people got out. I'm glad that they're with their families. But then you appoint a bunch of other federal judges like this administration has done who are people who give out football numbers for nonviolent drug offenses. So it's like, you're, you're giving and you're taking. Don't play the okie doke with me. We know what it is. I tell people all the time, look, I, I did that for the right wing. I just smacked them across the face. I could do it for the fake left too. You know, during the era of, uh, of when Obama was gonna get elected, we had Sarah Palin, people were making fun of her and they said, oh, she's an idiot. And you know, I don't think she was qualified, but when they asked her about the Bush doctrine, she didn't know what it was. And the liberals laughed at her. But here's the fucked up part is that while that was going on, they elected Obama, who would then complete the Bush Doctrine. And for people who don't know what the Bush Doctrine was, that was the knocking over of countries that were not aligned with the hegemonic view of America and the region. So we got rid of Iraq, we got rid of Afghanistan. Yeah, cool. You know, now we're, 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 we got rid of the last Ba'athists that were in, um, in, in the Middle East, which were like the remnants of whatever Russia had set up during the 60s and, and, and 70s. But then we got Afghanistan, which was literally right next door to China. No one ever put that together. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's a clear message to the Chinese. We're at your mm -hmm. fucking front door. You know, we're not just friends with the Indians. We're not just friends with your, your, with your people in Japan that you have a problem with. Now we're at your front door. Mm -hmm. So then what happened? That was during Bush. Then during Obama, Syria, a, a God debacle, a Libya, a slave market knocked down, Tunisia knocked over, Egypt turned into a military dictatorship where you had a, a revolution for the people that was then co-opted. So I, I, I think it really bothers me when I see people say, oh, this movement is fake or, or they'll just blurt out a name, like, oh, this guy's funding it. And I'm saying, well, wait a minute. Even if a person was trying to co-opt the movement, that doesn't make it fake, right? That doesn't, like, if a person tries to violate somebody else and they fight back, like, first of all, they, they're not inviting anything. They're still the person being a victim twice, the first time by someone trying to co-opt the movement, and the second time through propaganda, people, by people telling them that their struggle isn't real, that that's not what's really going on. And that's what's really going on, dude. Like, I had to talk to, yesterday we did a march between Latino people and black people here in New York, because there was a video that went on about Dominicans and black people fighting in, in, in Dykeman and Washington Heights. Now, New York is the biggest city in America. So we wanted to say, no, fuck that. We're not going to tolerate that narrative. And we had 20 blocks full of Afro-Latino people, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, um, Haitians, West African people. People, Ramali Graham's uh, family spoke. The mother of Mohammed Ba, who was a, a young man, a Muslim African immigrant, who was murdered by uh, NYPD, spoke. Um, she told the people not to give up. So there's genuine pain and hurt there. And it doesn't come from nowhere. It doesn't come from people not not understanding how to work with police. It comes from the police having this attitude that their 
patrolling a hot LZ in Vietnam, that they're, that they're on occupied territory. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to help the people. How about you, it's like you, you've seen that movie, A Time to Kill. Close your eyes and imagine that those little kids are white, right? Then what? You gotta, you, you gotta put them in line. For one people, it's like we gotta protect and serve. For the other people, we gotta patrol and control. And it's, it's like we, we're tired of that. And, and for people who think that's not real, well, I'm sorry that you live in a fake narrative. That is real. And, and, and that actually exists. And, and when you talk to some Latino people, they're tone deaf about racism too. And so you just honestly break it down and you say, well, Latin America was the birthplace of the racial tier system. So, you know, a person who is black in this country will go to uh, uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, they say, oh no, you're trigueño, you're mulato, or some fucking fake word, racist term that was invented as part of some caste system. I'm, I'm Latino here, people associate me with indigenous rights movements, but when I go to Latin America and I'll be in the Amazon jungle, they'd be like, well, wait a minute, he's, he's a mestizo. He's, you, you look like you're mixed with Spaniards. You're not 100% indigenous like our, our, our people. So I, I think what we don't understand is that those racial tier systems were not honored here in the United States when Latin American immigrants came. So my friend, for example, Mario Africa, who came from Cuba, he was a Marielito, right? And uh, he was on a Mariel boat lift and he came here and when he got to Miami, he's like, oh man, I'm free, I'm in America. He tried to go to a store in like 1976 and they were like, we don't want you here. You N-word, get out, get out, we don't want. And then they called him a mono, which means a, a, a monkey in Spanish. So he's just like, what, what? I'm getting it from my own people. I'm, get, I'm getting it from my own light-skinned people that are here. I'm getting it from the government and from these assholes that, 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 that say they love uh, a fighting against communism, but then people show up from here because it's not a fight against communism. It's, it's a fight against whoever's not our ally, whoever says no. You know, there, there are more repressive systems than communism, right? It's called a monarchy. We back plenty of them. We back plenty of military dictatorships. This is not about people's freedom, what we're doing. And I think it's taken a lot of time for people to finally fucking wake up to that. So, you know, everything that I've been talking about and rapping about in my music is going on. And, you know, I'm not just talking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. We started this Rebel Army Runs. We're gonna have the GoFundMe out today, tomorrow. But brother, I've spent $10,000 of my own money just making runs to these wholesalers in, in uh, uh, Bronx and Brooklyn who were kind enough to say, hey man, we're restaurant wholesalers. I know technique, you're, you're, you gotta take care of elderly people. Yeah, because to be honest, bro, the elders are the people that we communicated with in the projects who are the most scared. They don't know what to believe. Like you and I, bro, we have a sense of confidence. We're 30, 40 years old. Yeah, I'm gonna be good. But when you're 80, you, you imagine you're 80 years old, you click on a channel just for the people watching who got grandparents out there. you 80 years old, you click on one channel and they tell you everything's fake. You can go outside, it's fine. You click on another channel and it's like, no, don't go outside, you're gonna die. And it's like, they don't know what to believe. You gotta remember, I, me, Immortal Technique, I grew up in, in a time in which there were only 13 channels on TV. I'm showing my age now. I was born in 1978. I came to Harlem in 1981. In my era, there were 13 fucking channels online and the TV turned off at night, right? When we were little kids, we used to say, be right back on the internet because we were going to the bathroom. Now people don't say, be right back. That's a meme, right? They say, we don't want to say, be right back because we live on the internet. That's what happened. There's no more be right back because it's, it's a permanent lie, right? And I think that that's what people are missing, that elders don't know what to believe. So my program was specifically for elderly black folk and elderly um, uh, 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 Latino people, but it's mostly elderly black people that in, are in the particular projects that we visited in the Albany houses, um, although there are um, some Dominican and Puerto Rican people. And these are individuals that are lived by, side by side, right, without the narrative that they're pushing. Where was the Spanish language TV channel? Where was that racist Spanish language TV channel? I'll call them out here on Hip Hop DX. Where were they yesterday when we had that march where we showed 20 blocks of unity, huh? Where were they? They were, they were there when they were propping up that bullshit that happened on Dykeman, which actually had nothing to do with the thing. It was some street beef that was on the side, which I'm not gonna get to here, but like that, had, that, that wasn't the main cause of it. But then you don't wanna show a sign of unity, right? You don't wanna show people marching arm in arm. You don't wanna show thousands of Dominican people who know that they're black in the street 
It's just, it's a slap in the face. So we're, we, we don't need the narrative. We don't need your fucking election to tell our truth. We just gonna be out here and then I'm gonna keep doing the Rebel Army runs. Like I said, we'll release that GoFundMe. Our goal is to be able to provide for a new project or a new spot every week and then have some of the, the, the senior centers that we've been working with supplied on a weekly basis. And if that's the case, we can hopefully get them through the summertime in which I know it's gonna be hot. I know jobs are scarce. The economy is not rebounded. Remember, I live in New York City. A big chunk, a huge percent of the revenue stream comes from tourism. Who the fuck is coming here, bro? Right? Who's coming to New... Right? Look, look at me. Let me get real close. Who, who, who the fuck? You really coming here for what? It's, a, it's an epicenter yeah. of a pandemic. The streets are blocked off. The police don't wear black because then all of a sudden you're a protester and they want to question you. Like, people are not coming here. You know, they're not, they're not having honeymoons here like that. It's not, every museum's closed. You know, if you want to go to Broadway, you got to pay $1,200 and they let 16 people sit in a fucking aisle. It's just, it, it's crazy, you know? And I feel like this is the tipping point. And also, like I said before, there's no bread and circus. There's no NBA finals. There's no baseball. You know, you watch boxing and it looks like ballet with no music, right? You watch boxing, no disrespect. I love boxing, but the mic is positioned so you can hear the, the, the gloves touch and you can hear people move, but you can't hear the footwork very often unless they touch a creaky part of the ring. Huh? So what does it sound like? Ballet with no music. Yeah. I'm watching <laughs> fights and I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, I, I, I think that at some, at some level, you know, uh, it's going to get to a point where people realize that all these things in their society were distractions from asking what, what the fuck are you embezzling all this money from me from? Right? Mm. Shouldn't I have these services? When I talk to people, even people on the right, even people who lean right, even people who don't want to be called alt-right but have those fucking views, you know who the fuck you are. Then it's not that they're mad at free health care, right? They're not furious at the idea the government would give them free health care. They just don't think that the system would work perfectly. They don't know if we can afford it. But those people are confused. That's the, the free health care, when I say it's not a right, it's absolutely a right. It's the down payment for the freedom that we've already given this fucking government. Huh? You buy a house and it should be yours, but no, you got to keep paying the government forever or they'll take it from you, right? Taxes forever. Taxes for the death tax. Death fucking tax. Motherfucker, you can't even die without niggas taking your shit. So free healthcare should be the fucking trade-off. It should have been years ago. You know, fuck the founding fathers for not putting it in the constitution. It should have been there. Look, if we're going to, if we're going to be domineering over you, because every government set up this way. You go to a kingdom back in the day in ancient Greece. Why did people want to be part of the kingdom? Because you didn't want to be attacked by roving bands of brigands. They're going to protect you. America started out as a settler colonial state. They made leaving the colony a punishment because a lot of white immigrants did not want to live in a puritanical society. This is 100% true. They went to go run away and live with Native American people. Because A, you can live in a place where it's really that, that, that whole fake conservative lie of, oh, do what, you know, a man who, who pulls his own weight, yeah. you get your own thing. That, you didn't get that from, from, from white colonists. You got that from Native American people. You join here, even if you're a slave for seven years, if you work, your children don't have to be slaves. You're going to be free. We're going to make you part of the tribe if you can earn your fucking own. And that's the weird part. It's like they, they made running away from that a crime and killed those people to make room for their settlements. And now this is the aftermath of what we're living in. And for the people that think that that's not true, well then COVID is, is the person you need to argue with me because, not me, because we saw Rudy Gobert touch a microphone and people were screaming, oh, he's gonna give people, oh yeah? Well, what, hap what would happen then if Rudy Gobert were to cough in a blanket for a kid and say, oh man, I hope he goes home and gives his entire family COVID, that way when they all die, I can take their project, knock it down, and build whatever I want. Well, that's how America was made, you dumb motherfucker. That's how Boston came to be. That's how New York came to be. People were cleared out. And if you, if, if you want an actual history lesson and not you just don't want to hear me spit facts, you can look up the 330th Congress. And these people literally gave uh, a props to the Iroquois uh, League for the Iroquois Confederacy for helping to shape the way that America works in terms of how states have rights that are governed by the federal government, but they still respect the state rights, but the states have to respect certain federal guidelines. That does not come from, from the founding fathers. That comes from being inspired by indigenous people. 
we forget how much of our, our, our society is multicultural. That's why I don't believe that bullshit lie when people say, oh, it's multiculturalism that failed. No, you failed to be not racist. I think multiculturalism failed. This whole world was built on multiculturalism. Every aspect, even aspects of the English language, most of those, a lot of the words are French. Why? Because the Normans took over England in 1099. Come on, man. Like, just because a person has done something in history, please don't, don't say, oh, that's different for that time. Um, I don't know if people really read the history, but the laws against rape and murder in medieval Spain were brutal. These people will cut your hands off. They would geld you. You know what gelding is? They take a, a hot, for people who don't know, they take like, like red hot pincers and they clamp them around your, your genitalia and they just take it off, remove it to cauterize the wound. That's what they did to rapists out there in fucking medieval Spain. These people were ruthless. So please don't tell me that they, they lived in an era where there was no concept of rape or murder. You just went to a place in the world where those laws didn't exist so you could do it to a people that the Pope mm. said it was fine to do. So you're a fraud. You know you're lying to yourself. Stop doing that. You know, me for my whole life, I've been looking at it from, from, from a different perspective than other people. I say to them, I'm sorry. You know, I can see the value in some left-wing ideology. I can see the value in some libertarian ideology. But my revolution and my people's revolution doesn't begin with Marxism. That's a, a concept that was born in the 1850s. You know, disrespect to the people on, who are trying to do good work on the left. But I tell them, our revolution begins in 1492 when a, 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 a fucking Jeffrey Epstein that was armed to the teeth showed up and started kidnapping young ladies and, and, and forcing them into a sex trade, when people got their hands cut off for not bringing quotas of gold, when, 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 when the bones of this society, the foundation of this society was created, because it's still about looting. So you complaining about people taking some food but you've looted everything here. So it, it, it's just me going off like this is just, is, is just gets me through the day doing what I need to do, you know, just around. And then on top of it all, I gotta be in the studio making music, which is some whole other shit, but. Is there a, a lesser known history um, lesson or, or, or event in American history that you think encapsulates what's going on now that people might learn from uh, to, okay. to inform sure. themselves? A lot of times you hear people screaming on TV, oh, you know, uh, they're going to take away our guns and they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna enslave us and all this. And they give these examples. And these examples are actually false examples. Or one of them is at least. They say, oh, you know, Mao took the guns. Fidel took the guns. Now, I'm not going to speak about Chinese history because I'm still reading that up on that now. That's what I've, I've been doing during quarantine. Um, but I, I do know a lot about Latin American history and that's actually patently false. But it's because it's missing a greater lesson. And the lesson is this. When Fidel Castro was in fear that his island was going to be invaded by the United States after the Bay of Pigs, which was actually an invasion, like a CIA op to overthrow your fucking island. That's not propaganda. That's not fake news. That's real CIA people coming in there with heavily, heavily armed machine guns, not AR-15s to take away your island. When he thought that his island was under attack and Cuba was going to be overthrown, he armed every man, woman, and child that could carry a weapon. And they were trained how to do it. And because their fervorous belief in their republic was so strong, he trusted them and the society at large trusted them to have all of these guns and to make sure that every coast was, was watched, that every canal was checked, that every horizon was looked at, right? And that every bay was swept for anybody trying to get it. So what people think is, when they think about people banning guns is that it, they've missed a greater conundrum. When society trusts its people, it has no problem with lax gun laws. You can have anything out there, blah, 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 sure. But when the government doesn't trust you at all, when it loses its faith in its people for whatever reason, that's when it limits the support of your own weapons. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to look at, at these facts uh, that in many cases, a lot of these armed protests that we see, I, I'm not angry at those people. Like when people get at, oh, I want them to be shot. They should, I don't want no white protester who's angry to get shot. You know what I would like though, brother? I would like the police to treat an angry, unarmed black child with the same patience 
temerity and understanding that you do a white man armed with a bullshit AR-15 who's yelling in your face with no mask in the middle of a pandemic. That's it. Yes. We're not, I, I, don't hate, I don't hate other people because they think something different. It's only when you start getting into them eugenics and, 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 and like that silly race propaganda, that's what pollutes it. That and, 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 and the race, racial, racial the, the, the religious zealotry. That stuff is a turnoff for me. That's why I tell people, you know, when they ask, oh, well, you know, do you hang out with a lot of people with diverse opinions? Sure. Am I here with hardcore MAGA hat people? No. Why? For the same reason I don't hang out with hardcore religious people because I don't want to be converted. I'm sorry, but hardcore religious people are like that. And this shit is a cult. So when you come up to me and like every other word of your mouth is trying to convince me of something, I'm, or, I'm already skeptical of what your agenda is. We could use you as a voice for what? To further your agenda? Who are you really helping, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you're okay with children in the cage? No, but, 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 but. You know what I hear after but? You're not going to do anything about it. So step the fuck out the way, bitch, and let some real niggas do some shit about this shit. Oh, you're not going to do nothing about the police? You're going to complain about looting? All right, bitch, step the fuck out the way and let these real niggas do what the fuck we need to do about this shit. Oh, you're not going to do anything and just say that black people are racist against Latino people and that's the real problem? Shut the fuck up, yo. As Latino people, we're going to go out there and say, I'll tell you why we were taught to be racist. This is a racial tier system where black people were put on the, on the bottom with indigenous people and everyone else in the middle had some kind of special designation. And when you got here to America, that was not honored. And they treated you like, they were like, fuck you, you're nothing to us. And that's when you felt stupid. So you had to cling to the shoestrings of white society and pretend you're one of them and align yourself with them to act like they're gonna do something. But you can never, listen, you can never be an individual that compromises yourself in a situation and expect to have any integrity. You can compromise the situation, but now you've compromised yourself. And I only say that because I'm one of these Latino people that was raised to not be racist, right? And to, not re and to realize that racism isn't the remedy for racism. Knowledge is. Because when you destroy a devil with knowledge, oh man, you black people sold yourselves and that's like, okay, cool. Well, how about I destroy you with knowledge and break down how the, the, the kings of Europe, specifically in Portugal, Spain, targeted small minor rulers and told them that if they didn't execute the slave trade, that they would be replaced. And several of them were with their heads encased in, in glass and sent back to Spain and Portugal. Don't talk to me. Stop that, man. Like, what are you doing? Would you say, hey, there were some bad people that Hitler killed in the Holocaust too? No. Why? Because it would sound like you were making an excuse for a genocide. Well, why are you okay with doing that here? Like, when I hear about other people's struggles, I'm not mad at those things. Like, you know, when I hear about Ireland versus England, I think, Jesus Christ, an empire that runs, like, a two, three fourths of the known world versus a small island? Right? When I hear about Israel and Palestine, the, the world's fourth largest military against a nation of refugees, when I hear about the police who got two tanks in New York City and fucking a, a bazooka, right? Surface to air missiles, all kinds of, all, all kinds of guns, not just AR 15s, real machine guns, right? A 50 cal loaded on top of a fucking tank. What do you need that for, right? What the fuck are you doing? See, I think people forget something. The police rarely, rarely break down a door right when a woman's about to be raped. Rarely, if ever, stop someone right around the time when they're about to pull the trigger and kill someone. We practice a punitive system. We find people and we punish them afterwards. So when you first make a mistake and you say, oh man, someone, they went too far and you make, a, you make an excuse for, for a cop and you don't snitch on them for this and that, that's where the rot starts. Then he does something else. Then something else happens to the point where the whole culture of the NYPD is everything that they complain about the streets. Oh, you guys don't tell us what's going on so, so we can't help you. Okay, well, you don't tell on your partner for any crimes. And you know, when I was on the Netflix special uh, in, in, the, in the trial by media, that's exactly what I was saying to that cop. It was like, oh, I didn't hurt nobody. I said, yeah, but if your partner did and he was in front of you, I bet you wouldn't turn him into IAB. And that's true because that, that, that's a gang mentality. And we were tired of that. We, yeah. we're, we as the community, we're tired of that. And we have a giant coalition of young, and young people, elderly people, black, brown, Latino, um, indigenous, a lot of white people too that, that are just fed up with this shit, that are not cool with the way it's working. So we're, we're still gonna be in these streets, man. We got more yeah. in the past fucking two weeks than we did 
voting for Democrats or Republicans in 30 years. So if you think we're not going to still be out here until they say, no, we're going to take these billion dollars that they don't need for drones or a station in Tel Aviv. Why is the NYPD there? Why do you need to pay them for that? Why do you need these mega drones, all this other stuff? Until you reroute the position that you have, we, we, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. We, we, yeah. we, we, we want to see action. That's what we want for our people. We don't want one more person to die without necessity. You know, there are people, you're right. When people talk about mental illness, that's their go-to. You know, oh man, I was racist because I'm mentally ill. I've seen so many of these on, 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 when, when, whenever a Karen acts up. But what also makes me think about is, man, what a pathetic thing to do to use that as an excuse because you can't come up with something better. You know people can really check on that, right? And, and then what about the black and brown people who really have been killed because they were schizophrenic or autistic and rather than service them or help them and say, hey, man, I'm going to help you, you know, you killed them. Yeah. You killed them. And there's a cop right now who came out and confessed that he said, oh, man, you know, the arrest was good because he was selling cigarettes, but we killed that man. We killed Eric Gardner. He said we didn't offer him any CPR. All these things were supposed to do. It's like, man, if, if, you, if you push someone towards the edge of the building and you have an opportunity to grab them and pull them back and you don't, and you shove, you would just as well shove them over. And he said, that's exactly what we did. And I hope more cops come out. Yeah, and we need more and people. Say that this, they say that that shit's true, that they did kill him. And it's sad that even they'll say it and they'll still be bootleggers in the comments that will think that that didn't happen. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I ain't got time for y'all. Y'all yeah. are just trying to convince people out here to do nothing. Remember that next time you see one of these clowns talking reckless down there, oh, what can I do? What's that going to help? Okay, cool. That's your excuse to do nothing. That's not my excuse. I ain't got no excuses for you today, right? Mm -hmm. If I win, lose, or draw, the better man won. That's how I used to do it because I used to fight one-on-one. -on -one. That was how New York was back then. Yeah. No excuses, man. We just got to get the work done. Right. We got to help these people. And also remember that we, when we help our people, the elderly people, Let's not forget, they take care of the babies in a lot of the communities, right? They're watching the kids. So when we supply them, we're supplying the future generation as well, man. You know, and, and for the young people that are watching this program, man, get involved because these kids look at me and they see an old man. You know, I, I get it. I don't have any gray hairs. I'm, I'm super lucky. I got good genes. 40 years old and I know gray hairs. But the crazy thing is I was born in 1978. For these kids... That little kids, it might as well be 18 cents. But you, who are, who are 17, 18 years old, if you're watching this, man, you are like Achilles to these little kids. You're like a, 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 a fucking African folklore hero to these kids. They look up to you like a hero, man. Like, lead them, lead them the right way. Show them a good example. Ra ra raise these little motherfuckers with morals, man, because they, I could tell them whatever, but... but it's, it, it doesn't float unless they see it in front of their faces. You guys have the power to make that change and make it happen. And that's all I'm saying, man. You know what I mean? I'm, right. I'm, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do this until the solar flares wipe society off the earth. So. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. Well, well, thank you so much uh, for the time. And, and, and I know that a lot of people watching this will feel inspired. Um, you know, uh, b before we get out of here in like one to two sentences, because uh, I know we, we could go for hours, but... I, I, I believe in like, you know, divine guidance a lot of the times, especially with people who are able to articulate certain things with such clarity. Um, if you were to say your, you know, your purpose or the message that you feel you were put on this earth um, to deliver to people, what, what would you say that message is? To be honest, just because I'm a student of history, I think it could be a million different things depending on what era of people remember the music that I did, mm -hmm. you know? It will be a local law enforcement. Let's say somebody, we do have a dictatorship in this country. What is going to be the end result? It'll be cops versus troops. It'll be, it'll be urban warfare. So I depicted an urban warfare. Then I depicted the uh, corruption in, in the White House and a society in, in which all the chickens come home to roost. So I don't know what it'll be remembered for. You know, I'm a person who, who decided to talk about the drug trade in Latin America, who started talking about American cartels and how they exist here. 
uh, I was one of the first people to ever talk about rape in a song um, that was just about that topic. Sure, people have mentioned it before, said the word, put it in a bar, but I made an entire song about it. And it's one of the most popular songs that exists. Like yeah. literally people, I've had people stop me in other countries, other places. People don't know who I am. The children of prominent Republican politicians have hit me and been like, yo, I got high in my car and I couldn't stop. I can't say who they are, but <laughs> just cause I don't, I, I'm not, when someone tells me something in confidence, I'm not going to say it, but I'll tell you privately. It's just like the randomest people you would, people you wouldn't even imagine athletes, uh, 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 singers, um, politicians, just everybody across the board, actors, and then just regular people that I've met through my life that knew me that were like, that's you? Like, sure. I, I don't know what I'll be remembered for. I don't know. But I will say this. I hope that people remember that my message was that we were willing to hear truth no matter who spoke it. And that we wanted to put that truth into the right perspective because we know that words and facts can be manipulated in order to fit an agenda. So it's not just enough that you're telling the truth, but you're telling the truth with a purpose, right? So if, if, if we're looking upon it for, for, for that reason, then, then can't we apply that to everything else in our life? Can't we take that message and, and, and push it even farther? Like, I get it. Some people think that that's a lofty goal to try to change humanity. But I feel like that's the best chance we have for the survival of our species. Mm. You know, it may not even be human beings that watch this recording with you and me someday. It may be a new type of human, like the way, like what we are to Neanderthals, it may be something else. And they'll look at us the way we look at these Neanderthals and say, these people have been dead for a million years. Look at their society, it was so primitive. And people will look at us and be like, you know what? These people were thought they were civilized because 200 years ago, they were burning people alive for not believing in their Hebrew zombie. And then they kept people in chains because they were a different color. And they kept justifying it through all these pathetic means. And then after they set them free, they had all these little hurdles for people to go through about voting and everything else. They were the, the downfall of their themselves. You know, a, a superstitious, blood-soaked ape that, that, that sat there and fucking tried to dictate the world to everybody else. Is that the legacy of all human beings? Is that what we have to, to, to deal with, to be that? So I, I don't know. It depends on who interprets my work. But I hope, you know, if if you can realize something, even if you're not the same species as us, just remember this, there was something unique about our human race, that no matter where you were, no matter who you were, no matter how you were born, whether you were a man or woman, whether you were born with skin that was red and brown like mine, or white like this guy's, or black as tar, doesn't matter. Whether you believed in God, whether you didn't believe in any God, whether you believed in Jesus as your personal savior, or Muhammad, or, or Moses and the Hebrew prophets that no human being can be held down without resistance. In other words, if you want to keep a human being enslaved, be prepared to sleep with a knife for the rest of your life. Be prepared to keep your knee on his neck forever because the moment you let it go, we will rise. And that's what they did. They kept their knee on his neck forever because they wanted him to die. That's what I'm saying. They know that the moment they let us go, we will not be docile. We, no one ever came quietly. The greatest lie ever told about any people, any people, is that they came quietly, that they didn't fight back. We're human beings, we resist. That's who we are. We resist oppression, we resist perceived oppression. We, we, we are people who do not want to be like, enslaved and put in line. That's not part of our nature. We're not, we're, 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 we're a social creature, a social animal. We need human communication. We thrive off goodness. A smile kills cancer in people, corny as that sounds. A, 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 a good word and, and patience and understanding heals PTSD in some people, you know? Positive reinforcement, not just negative criticism, right? And, 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 and there's some times where people can't be healed from illnesses, but there are plenty of times when a kind word and when, when attention to detail and patience and understanding in a person changes them. And I just know this because I was a person that was incarcerated as a kid. And, you know, when I got out, people still believed in me. 
and they gave me the self-confidence to do what I do now, to enter battles and to, you know, to write the music that I've written in jail and to be someone who's important enough for you to give a fuck what I'm saying now, if you do. So that's it, man. That's what I got. Perfect. Well, uh, yeah, you know, if, if we don't get hit by an asteroid, like you said, looking forward to speaking again in the future. <laughs> Definitely, and if, man. Whoever's watching this, hope you guys got something from this. Thank you so much for your time and continued work. Peace, bro.